Hey, guess what? I have the room background. Let me fix that. There we are. Much better. Alright, just been doing some things. Wonders Tales, I'm almost done. I got two more to do. I need to do a level 90. Hopefully we'll be able to get to, to one today. And then I think I might repeat the other ones. We'll see. Maybe we'll get to a level 90. But first, we need to do the healer roll, roll quest. Here I am on my sage. But Alamiga, Alamigo and Ulda. It's because of all the uh, general welding. Raubon. It was pronounced differently, like, a couple different times. Uh, if you're ready to lend us aid, I'll, I'll praise you in the situation. Received reports from a, of a creature who believed to be a blasphemy stuck in the streets of Alamigo. People have been uh, assigned to track it. Uh, troops have been assigned to track and slay the beast, but there, is, but there are likely to be ca casualties. With most of our healers posted elsewhere, we have thought to petition you for aid. I'm glad to help. Well, once again, we're in your debt. That we shall form Commander Alden forthwith. My comrades in the immortal flames will be glad glad to have you watching over them. You see, there have been no sightings of any blasphemy in our lands. We have joined our Aramigan allies in their hunt for their fiend. Trouble is, the majority of our own healers are working day and night to treat the tempered Imperial soldiers captured by Pe at Pegglethorn. For that reason, we too will be glad for your help. I, your presence alone will be of great comfort to, to the troops, I'm sure. It's time of the essence, I ask that you make your way to the Alamegan court and report for duty. Commander Aladdin is overseeing the hunt and he will be explained all upon your arrival. May Rago Grinch is sick. Strength. Off to the Alamegan court. Master Windwall, we were told you were on your way, but this is but this is even quicker than expected. I'll tell Commander Alden you've arrived. One moment, please. Can't remember the Alamean accent. Bye. Glad you could join us. I appreciate that you have, uh, you have a far greater crisis to worry about, but we cannot afford to ignore the situation here either. I, I'd like nothing more than to hear about your recent adventures, but I'm afraid such pleasantries will have to wait. I can't do a good Raubound. As our men in Thavnirs have told you, your blasphemy is loose in Alamigo. When it first appeared, the city guard were able to get most of the bystanders to safety, and for mercy, those caught in the chaos only suffered minor injuries. But the fiend managed to escape, and has not been seen since. We must find it, and soon, for as long as it remains at large, every man, woman, and child is at risk. As with the case in Thavnir, the blasphemy's very existence seems to spur the creation of lesser beasts. The longer it is allowed to roam free, the more tragedy our people will suffer. We want to see the change take place.
Aye, there were several eyewitnesses who gave the same account. The man walking through the Alamedian quarter fell to his knees all of a sudden, and a moment later transformed into the monstrosity we now pursue. But beyond the fact that he is a young Highlander, we know no next to nothing about him, given the descriptions of his appearance are too vague to help identify the lad, with no clues as to his name or background. For all we know, we might not, not have b even been born in El Amigo, but I've seen been the son of refugees come to visit. There are other possibilities we're investigating, though. That said, I doubt his circumstances are unique. Blasphemies and beasts are born when men are overcome by despair, and whatever drove him to turn likely could have done the same to another. Therefore, if we are to prevent future tragedies, it is imperative that we identify and address the underlying cause. Because until we do, we have, to have no choice but to deal with the afflicted the only way we know how. I granted them a quick death. For now, I would have you join the hunt and keep my men from falling prey to these creatures. Are you up to it? You have my thanks. And as chance would have it, you have just received word that a number of beasts are spotted on the outskirts of Alagana. The troops stationed there have already put them down, but are wounded in the process. First and foremost, they need medical attention. That's where you come in. I'll meet you there. I know these are really side quests, but I really wish because they are relatively important. That they would have at least give voice, li voice lines. Although I think it's probably because they say my name and since they can't really record every single name that anybody could ever think of. That's why they don't do voice lines whenever they're whenever you see a set of conversation where they actually say your character name. Although the soldiers were able to lead the beast away from the village and called a lot of them, victory did, did not come easily. It's times like these that a uh, lack of healers are most so sorely felt. I dare say there's yet to be they've yet to receive any treatment at all. See to their wounds while I survey the area for any stragglers that may have escaped. Once I've completed my patrol, I'll head to the village to gather eyewitness reports. Look for me thereafter. Oh, God's been good. I feel reborn. Hold on. You're Emigos, aren't you? I can't believe it. You're the one who inspired me to join the resistance in the first place, and now you've come to save me in my hour of need. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget this. Thank you. Thank you. I saw them change right before my eyes. They weren't monsters I killed, but innocent men. But it had to be done. There were others who had to protect. We had to protect. And thanks to you, I can continue to do just that. Once I've made my way back, I'll give a full account. Families, they'll, they'll understand. For treating the wounds of these soldiers, you have my thanks. There, there's two, no doubt. Seems they are indeed successful in slaying all the beasts. My search them is any indication, but we must be, remain vigilant. I've also spoken. Are involved? Let's notice that. 
I've also spoken with several people who've witnessed the moment of the transformation, though the ordeal was understandably left them rather shaken. Aye, they've been through a fa- Aye, you've been through a fa- fair few ordeals yourself, I'm a ghost. As for me, I've kept busy with that, this and that, like getting the hang of this wheelchair. Obviously, it has its limitations, but it gives me where I need to go. I've been working with the, this new organization as well, which is what brought me here. But no sooner have I arrived than then those locals turned. Regenfried, I he- heard you were there when it happened. What can you tell us? Uh, the ones who underwent the change were the very people who, who we were trying to help. Perhaps I should explain from the beginning. The meeting these held in the royal palace marked a turning point for all of Garibania. It spurred us to open a dialogue with people and communities we otherwise would have shunned. But there's still so many problems to be addressed. Countless souls struggling to build new lives for themselves. I decided to form a volunteer group, the Silver Griffins. Our main concern, the welfare of our amigos who sided with the Empire for whatever reason and helping them find their place in society. In particular, the surviving families of the Karnia Lupi. Let's change your tune. Make no mistake, I have not forgiven them. I don't have that in me. I doubt I ever will. But the memory of that day in the palace... Of Fatola asking to be locked up again after saving us all? Stayed with me. I need to think, thinking about why she and the other youths would commit such atrocities. Why they swear to serve the Empire. And the answer was simple. Because they'd seen what we'd, been, we'd seen and suffered much the same. In a hell where all are condemned, they chose to betray one brother to save another. That's how the Guardians win. Not by breaking you, but by making you break yourself. By making that choice the right one for man at the end of the, his tether. Healing only begins with liberation. Some scars never will regardless. Those who return from foreign lands may have difficulty carving out a living here. But the ones who pledge allegiance to Garlemald. This is not the Alamigo we dreamed of. But after 20 years of misery, I have not seen it all th- thrown away because we can't come to terms with the past. So I formed the Silver Griffins to see that no one is cast aside. It's a ca- cause I support, and that's why they bu- that's what brought me here today. I've been acting as a mediator. Aye, and in the short time he's been with us, he's proven himself a natural. But despite our early successes, the families of the Skulls continue to refuse our help. I see. I think that... I see where this is leading. They're the ones who turned, yes? Comes as no surprise. Their kin tormented and murdered fellow fellow Alamegans. Anyone with a conscience would feel shame and guilt. And for some, it might be too much to bear. Hmm. I think I might know why they're turning us away. It's a sensitive matter, though, so let's go somewhere we won't be overheard. I'm trying to remember our involved voice. About one of the men who turned. So his memories with the echo. I'll not pretend I understand it, but tell us what you've learned. It only ca- caught a glimpse. That was enough. It was in the occupation. Man raising his son. Only the two of them. But they were family. Kept his boy clothed and fed. He chose to side with the Empire. Knew what others would say. But he did it anyway. And so he was branded a traitor. Every day his son 
listen to the jeering, the insults. There was nothing he could do. When he came of age, he joined the skulls in the hope that it would make life easier for his father. He never dared to question his orders, no matter how depraved. He died in the revolution, but not before killing his own countrymen. His father wept not for the betrayer and murderer, but for the man he could have been. He blamed it all on himself, right up until the change took him. I can only pray he and his boy have finally found the peace they are denied in life. Alas, there's, there is an all too familiar tale. They cannot forgive themselves, nor can they see how anyone could. The sins of their kin weigh heavy on them. They think themselves undeserving of our compassion. If they carry on like that, they'll turn into beasts. We've got to help them before it's too late. Growing up half guardian in, in an amigo, I know how it, how it feels to be shunned and hated, to hate myself. But so long as you give yourself and others a chance, you can change for the better. And while I might not be as clever or eloquent as someone like Alvino, I know I can make a difference. I, I might not be quite the swordsman I used to be. I'm still a fighter at heart. I owe it to Aba and Alie to, t to make the most of this life so long as I've got it. I should probably put my visor up during these times. The Silver Griffins will, will give our, our all to see that no more beasts or blasphemies ravage Garabani again. So, Commander Adin, do we have your approval to continue our work? Of course. There is no enemy more formidable than despair. I'll be a fool to refuse your help. That even a single one of our people has succumbed to this transformation is proof of our failure to protect them. Therefore, I pledge the Silver Griffins my unconditional support. Together, we will prevail. Now that we, that we have Emigos on hand to aid the troops, I believe we are ready to face any beasts we encounter. Though I fear it is only a matter of time before others appear, I ask that you lend the Silver Griffins your assistance in the meantime. Very good. For now, let's return to the city. Back to the Alamegan Quarter. Somewhat apropos that I'm running a griffin through, uh... Alamego. Those who harbor guilt do, do so not because they have weaker heart, but because they have failed to meet the demands they make for themselves. It was the same for me when I believed that my failures would lead to the Sultana's assassination. The despair and self loading were indescribable. I was fortunate that you and the other scions came to my rescue, that I had friends who convinced me I was more than the sum of my worst mistakes. Now we must do the same for the people of Alamigo. We must help them to heal and find the strength to, if not forgive, and to come to terms with who we were, so that we can look to who we can be, who we can aspire to be. This is precisely why the work of the Silver Griffins is so vital. Though our pr problems are not new, the emergence of this deadly phenomenon means we cannot afford to delay addressing them any longer and we will be better for the, it ultimately. 
Once we decided a course of action, you'll be the first to know. Until then, may Rolger watch over and keep you. A new action, Numa. I can't, I can't use it right now. I'm running out of buttons. We were helping you stop by. I'll show you, show you to Commander Aldin at once. They're involved. It's nice to see you are involved. Oh, welcome sight as always, Captain. Hi. A lot's happened since last we, we spoke. We silver, silver griffins have been keeping busy. You say Captain because I am a captain in the Immortal Flames. I am a Flames Captain. Or Flame Captain. Aye, a lot's happened since last we spoke. We see the Griffins have been keeping busy. As have I, my men, and I am afraid we have little shirt to show of our effort. Though we've been searching high and low for the blasphemy, we have seen neither hide nor hair of it. Unfortunately, everyone else has had had better luck. We've received reports of lesser beats throughout Girbanya, and putting them down is as important as hunting the blasphemy that got away. To complicate matters, Rumors have been circulating that these beasts were were the Skull's kid. While this was true for the recent incident in Alagana, we cannot have people jumping to conclusions given that they might feel tempted to do so. Uh, it has been suggesting that it, it has been suggested that we take these individuals into custody for their own protection as much as the safety of others. But that would also isolate only isolate them even further further and give credence to the rumor. Recent unrest has un hindered the efforts of the Silver Griffins to no end. Therefore, I ask that you aid them in their endeavors and see that there is aught that can be done. Also, you'll be joined by another volunteer. Try not to be too surprised. I thought I felt my ears burning. Portola. You would have expected to see her because in the little art for the quest that had Portola. I said I don't need a keeper, but did they bloody listen? Did they bollocks? Come on, don't be like that. This is what you what you agreed to. Besides, you never knew that you might have need of a healer, and there's none better than Emigos. He's right. We've earned a massive measure of trust, and this shouldn't be taken taken to mean otherwise. The Cassis, are we now? There's no need for that sodden color. There's sodden color, I. Hmm? We all know it's not coming off anytime soon. But this is how how it'll be, and fine, as long as he keeps out of my way. I want the two of you to visit the Silver Griffin's headquarters in Alagana. Several relatives of the Carnia Lupi have agreed to meet with them, and we could do with a measure of measure of precaution. anyone so much as mentions the skulls I'll deal with it. Understood? Let's get this over with. It's as much a risk of turning as anyone. Maybe even more so. We don't need the echo to see the weight she's carrying. They still got a not got a handle on her own echo either. Sometimes the visions come without warning with with such force that all she can do is stay standing. There's no telling what might happen when she comes face to face with the family of her former comrades. So look out for her, please. I wish there was more I could do for her myself. But We've all got our own duties, and I'll see to them to the end. So it must be all. Follow Fordola's lead. We're counting on you both. 
But be ready to step in, even if she curses you for it. Did you? Did he just give me some sage advice? Let's see right now. Yeah, it's a bit bad. Okay, you're gonna I'll lift the visor. Okay. Back to Elegano. Better feel it, Rabon would send you Amigos. But as for her, if you got any complaints, take it up with the commander. No, no, it's fine. Truth be told, I've that day at the Royal Palace. I've been thinking. Stop. I don't want to say. You don't want to say it, and I don't want to hear it. To the matter at hand, then. We Silver Griffins have been working to support the relatives of the Crania Lupi, but one family has gone missing. A mother and her parents, who lived under together under the same roof. One of ours paid them a visit, but they were nowhere to be seen. When they went inside to check, they found the house had been torn to shreds. Thick gouges on the floor and the walls, made by a beast's claws, by the look of them. Think they've tanned? Aye, that's the most likely explanation. Please, do what you must before anyone gets hurt, else is hurt. No time to waste. We head west, you east. All right, possibility to battle. Just put my right visor back down. Man, I'm just doing everything wrong. Please, my new skill. Oh, I took that with this gear. Ran out of time. Later, you spy an envelope containing a crumpled, tear stained letter. Read the letter, yes. Dear Mother, I hope this letter finds you well. Time is short, so I'll keep this brief. Although I have no, never done anything to make you proud, I promise you things will be different when the war is over. Till then, take care and know that I love you with all my heart. Placing the letter back into its envelope, you turn your attention to find the others.
You discover what appears to be a wedding ring in it, with the name and date engraved on the inside. Though seemingly no more clues to be found, you decide to report to Dragonfree. Were you able to find anything? When it is as we feared, I found it killed the third. I was carrying this. Merchant ring. I'll deliver these effects to the next of kin and arrange for a funeral. But or as close to one as possible under the circumstances. Mm. No changing the past. We'll always carry it in scars. But no matter how, who you w we were or what we did, we're all amigas. Then and now. The Empire was our enemy then and now it's despair. Good words and deeds will serve us best in this fight. Weapons even an old man like me can yet wield. Thanks to the two of you, the missing villagers may finally be laid to rest. I and the other silver griffins have, will, will redouble our efforts to prevent any further tragedies. I finished checking the wares, sir. Everything's in order. Good work. Take a rest, lad. More than earned it. Keep this to yourself, but Everett, younger brother... Everett's younger brother was a member of the Crania Lupi. He is ex exactly the sort of person we're trying to help. Like many of the others, he was reluctant to talk to us at first, but after we gained his trust, we were able to help him find work. He's taken to it well. Sir, the butcher. Traitors, all of us kin snares, serving for hate and death, hate and death. Oh shit. Get back, get back. Stay away from her! Padola saved your girl's life! Right, I know, but she's... Happened in an instant, that poor lad. But it had to be done and without hesitation. Would have been worse otherwise. Could you go off to Fodola and see to her wounds? I'll do what I can here. Okay. 
There's a reason why I hadn't gotten that before. Oh, there she is. And fine, leave me be. Me at least heal up that shoulder. I said I don't need help. It's me healer, let me do my job. Gods, you're like a dog with a bone. Go on then and make it quick. This is a simple cast of a spell. Coriel can't change its spots. There's no washing the blood off my hands. Nor would I, even if I could. Taking up Galleon Steel was the first choice and not the last. Like the first kill, the hardest. Like the first kill, the hardest. Every choice after that came easier and easier until I stopped counting. Stopped caring. You tell yourself it's right. It's for the greater good. You give yourself the order. Feel the ground tremble as the cannon fires. And when the dust settles and your own men are buried underneath, beneath the rubble, you tell yourself, you tell yourself. Ah, me too. All right. You mustn't give in. Ha, <laughs> ha. A man in the village saw us past. I'm the one who killed his brother. Uh, I'll be alright. I just need a moment. Can you wait with me? See, the thing with dealing with Fordola is you just kind of have to let, let her be. Don't try to convince her. She's thick-headed, as it is. I think uh, the earlier um, Alfredo and Alize's mom, Millions, had said, had said, show by your deeds, not your words. To show, show to their father. Kind of the same for, for Dola. It's just constantly. She wants to be. Or she's like rough and tumble. And, and just trying to be tough all the time. Just be, just be like, yeah, you are. Okay. Just, I'm a healer. Let me do my job. Now I tried to convince him like. Like calmly uh, uh, casually just be like like let me just let me do the jobs like i know just, just whatever let me heal you <laughs> you know it is just doing some deeds it's just let her be right she'll, she'll get over it. it's fine that's that's how i'm perceiving things at least everything the skulls fought for sacrifices you we made the things we did. In the end, it was all for nothing. Sometimes I look back on the road I walked in the bitterness that I can taste, and I wonder if I'd grown up in another time in another place, would I have been done the same to a different people? Is it always in me to be me? I'm trying to get Fort Dola's accent because I can hear her voice in my head. Certain things. All I know is everyone's been better off if I'd never been born. But I was. I dragged others into a hell of my own making. I remember those two brothers in particular. Childhood friends of mine. The older one listed with me, but the younger... He would never have made it, made it as a soldier. He was too kind. Too good. 
Lynn's Fred died at Specula Imperatus. Imperatus. But his brother's still out there somewhere. Not that I got the ch courage to face him after what I did. I hope he's found the life he deserves. Not all of the Crania Libby at the tower that the tower starred that day though. I know for one my, of my visions that at least one survived. Rudolph. Rudolph. I'm glad he made it out, but too many others didn't. Too many others still need our help. I help make this blasphemy, and by Roger I'll kill the bastard if it's the last thing I do. Anyway, that's enough out of me. I'll be heading back to the city to make my report. Suggest you do likewise. Welcome back. Fodola's already given her account, and I'd like to hear yours too. Exposition. Though she almost turned into a beast herself. Hmm. I'll have to take that into consideration before sending her into the field again. As far as the events in Alagana are concerned, the two of you did well. Despite the appearance of several beasts, you were able to prevent any further casualties. However, this serves to confirm that those with connections to the Karnia Lupi and should be considered at risk of turning. Over the years, many of them have drifted away from the larger settlements and have taken up, taken to living in secret. Others made their way to Uldar as refugees, including some individuals of interest. As such, we are working closely with the Immortal Pl Flames to locate and offer support to those refugees in particular. In fact, I plan to make the journey there for an audience with the Sultana. Once my preparations are complete, perhaps you might accompany me. I'm sure she'll be glad to see you. Raban will be able to go see see an old friend. Quest to protect vulnerable Alamegans leads to old ah. Did you see Commander then I take it? This way please? A request for an audience with the Sultana has been ex accepted. Here's the thing is, do you, if, if Raubon makes a request to an audience with the Sultana, do you think the Sultana would decline that? No! <laughs> Never! Before we depart, I sh I'll share what we've learned since last we, we spoke. Blasphemy continues to elude us, all the while driving others to succumb to despair in turn. Even with Alamegan and Uldan forces searching for signs of the beast and more potential victims, we have yet to discern a pattern in the chaos. Nevertheless, if the blasphemy is like others, its behavior is likely dictated by the passions and regrets of the man it once was. Therefore, any information concerning him and the life he led may help us to track it down before it strikes again. We don't want people to shun the families of the skulls any more than they, they already are, but the fact remains that the vast majority of the beasts have been, been born from them. They are the ones of great, greatest risk of turning without question. Wadola concerns me too. She came close to transforming once before, so I think it best if we keep her out of this, this after all. 
She does des deserves a chance to make amends. I'm inclined to agree with Demagos. She was able to resist the transformation and has shown no signs of succumbing since then. If she wants to do her part, I say we'd let her. If only I could go in her stead. Actually, I was hoping you would come with us to meet the Sultana. I believe she would benefit greatly from your understanding of the struggles our people face. You'd gain you'd gain from the experience too. While she's not the sort to brandish a sword to charge into battle, you'll soon discover she is a champion of her own arena, brave as any warrior. Doubt she'd have, have much to learn from the likes of me, but I'd be an honor to make her her acquaintance. Yeah, I think she'd like you. My coffee's still hot. Arnvald and I were going ahead. We're waiting for you in the hunting hust, Hustine Strip. We'll see you in autumn. Off to Ulda. I don't think that'll work. I want to make this. All right. Oh, Master Papashan is just telling us that Narmo, or should I say Lady Lyra, has gone on another vigilance about the city. Though it's not my place to question Her Grace's judgment, I do wish she had consulted me before running off. Uh, excuse me. Though it's not my place to question Her Grace's judgment, I do wish she would consult me before running off on her own, and perhaps I was overthinking it, but it's unlike her to keep guests waiting. If I may say so, sir. So with blasphemies appearing throughout the land, it's a dangerous time to get, be going for a stroll. And I suspect that may, may be the very reason she wishes to see for herself how the citizenry fare these trying times. Even so, it's downright reckless. We'll find her, though. No, no, I couldn't possibly allow such esteemed guests to come now. We might have been here on official business, but we're old friends. And if you may remember, I have a knack for tracking down errant sultanas. Some might say that knack is rather charitable. <coughs> I should be glad for the assistance. I'll take a look around here, qu quizzing the locals. will give me an opportunity to learn of recent going on in Old Isle too. Well then, there's no time like the present. Fear not, not with me on the case. It'll be, this will be over before you know it. Mm. Here's my visor. I go to Sapphire Avenue Exchange. It's been some time since I last got in these streets for, for young Lyra. As a matter of fact, Papa Shan and I would compete to see which one, 
which of us would find her first? As I recall, most of the contest ended in my favor. The trick, you see, is to look past the disguise and pay attention to the gestures and manners, the tiniest movement that might give her away. Come, I'll show you how it's done. Follow Ravan's lead and try not to fall behind. She's fond of perusing the stalls here. She's not here. Where could she be? Or oh, she's been abducted. In one of these pots, perhaps not. I've never known her to be this elusive. Hmm, that's odd. I've tried all of her usual haunts, so unless she's hiding inside a barrel or something equally nonsensical, she must be elsewhere. That's why did she choose now of all times to run off where she's been abducted or run the foul of a beast? I need to assume the worst. Right. I know, but it's hard not to worry. Where could she be? I'm going to think of it. Something Puff Papachon said caught my ear. She thought not a moment went on this excursion because of the emergence of the blasphemy and the beast. Better understand how our people are coping with the situation. If so, she's driven to seek out the most desperate and destitute. Her lane, then. But I ask you to lead the way. I'll admit, my ability to track missing persons may have dulled somewhat. Poor Lane has been plagued by pickpockets and the like. But watch your back, so go ahead and give this search for Lelira your full attention. Ravan is now accompanying you, blah blah blah. Go to Pearl Lane. Well, it may not be immediately obvious, conditions here have improved considerably of late. The Grace continues to support the rebuilding efforts in Garabanyan, which has led to a creation of jobs for many of the locals, both here and on the other side of Balesar's Bal Wall. That's the, uh, the Reaper Guild, <laughs> the Limures. In every society, there are the haves and the have-nots, and seldom is this divide more solely felt than, than here in Ulda. Many of the young, able-bodied work for Lolorito as gods, though he earns more in an afternoon than most will in a, in a lifetime. There she is. Not, not uh, <clears throat> Lady Lilira. Raubon? What are you doing here? Hmm. 
I'm gonna go with you. Well, I'm glad to see you both. Our meeting is not yet due to commence in for several bells. What is the meaning of this? We were worried, and for for good reason. It's far too dangerous times to be roaming about here, about alone, Your Grace. <laughs> Some things never change, but I assure you, I'm quite capable of looking after myself, my own city of all places. More importantly, I wish to observe firsthand how the people have been faring of late. There might be be better prepared to participate in our discussion later. But I have finished. You'll, you'll be comforted to hear. Then pray, allow us to escort you to the more amenable surroundings. Would you like to ride on my shoulder? Certainly not. You have already attracted more than enough attention. Yeah, this is true. I thank you all for, for making the journey here here during these difficult times. And it is my pleasure to properly make your acquaintance on behalf of the people of Eorzea. Allow me to express my sincerest gratitude for your continued dedication to our cause. Uh, with respect, your grace, I'm just a soldier. Was a soldier. Say, I say, still I say, Commander Eldin would not make such a such a distinction, and neither will I. You yet serve your people and have provided solace to many of Alamigo's most vulnerable. If we are to deal with this threat, we must forearm ourselves with knowledge. I understand you come bearing information regarding the blasphemy and its victims. We yes, have indeed. Exposition. Hence the need to locate families of Crania Lupi members who have fled to Thanalan. There is no need to, for the struggles faced by Alamegan refugees. There is no end to the struggles faced by Alamegan refugees, and those who once pledged allegiance to the Empire are no exception. But rest assured that irrespective of their past, all will be treated with an even hand. All will be afforded such, such aid as I am able to provide. Magnanimous, as always, Your Grace. Uh, if I might be so bold, I have a question. What do you have in mind for those most at risk at undergoing the change? I believe there is but one recourse. Earnest and open dialogue. While though... Some are born into unimaginable wealth, others suffer great hardship and oppression. The circumstance of our birth is beyond our control, our fate subject to, to the whims of the gods, some would argue. I once thought myself a prisoner of my fate, a figurehead helpless to watch on as my people starved, a powerless puppet. I wanted nothing more than to cast it all aside to free us all, but failed in my naivety and then was afforded a second chance for my privilege. The world is unfair, terribly so, but we have the power to push back against inequalities and injustices, if not overcome them by unblessed occasions, to love our neighbour and share in life's bounties, to open our hearts and come together as one. Truer words were never spoken. But without the support of the people, such words are not but vain platitudes. 
Thankfully, my recent attempts to make inroads with the monetarists have met with some success, despite differing views on many subjects. We yet strive to find common ground. Common ground. We've been pawing all over our efforts into aiding families of the Crania Lupi, and while it seemed to, to help it to a degree, some, some have still succumbed in turn. Of course, they're not the only ones in danger. Alamegans everywhere. Whether they sided with the Empire, fought for the resistance, or were caught in the middle, they all suffered. They all wake up in the night at times, haunted by the memories of death and despair. We know what can happen if those feelings are left to fester. The legacy of the Imperial occupation will not soon be forgotten, but rather than speak to forget, a hap is necessary to remember, to acknowledge and accept the truth of it, that we had, that they may properly mourn those they have lost. Aye, a remembrance. I propose we hold a memorial ceremony for those who died in the war. Everyone, no matter who they were or what they did. Let them be loved, let them be hated, but above all, let them be remembered. In the remembering of the dead and their honour and their sin, we, the living of Alamigo, may yet find a sliver of common ground. It is a noble sentiment, but bringing together people who have reason to distrust one another and risk inflaming tensions could be a recipe for disaster. Then again, we can't keep ignoring the, mer the married in the room and do nothing to address the situation. As long as we leave it to the individuals to decide whether or not to attend the ceremony, I think it's worth a try. Organizing an event of this scale will require a great deal of effort, so I offer my full support. Once you know what's needed, come to me and we'll put the plan into action. Obviously, some will balk at the idea, which is perfectly understandable, so I'll be listening to their opinions as well. After all, we want to be a ceremony that brings Alamegans together. Mm. And I was wondering, Your Grace, if I might ask for your approach to, well, talking to people, putting them over. As you can tell, I'm no politician, and I'd be grateful for any advice you can share with me. Why, I'd be delighted to. As a matter of fact, I have a number of matters I wish to discuss with you. On that note, I suggest you and I return to El Amigo. Mm. Raban and I. Our involved will stay here with the Sultana. Yay, leg! I knew our involved would make a good impression, and he's outdone himself. Not only was he found a new avenue in life to explore, he has taken it with considerable plum. And while his proposed memorial ceremony is bound to have its detractors, I think that many will come around. Not all, but not fight pray. For our part, we must stand at the ready for whatever may occur. I shall send word if there are any, any developments. Uh, level 88. 
I think this is the one where we actually run into the blasphemy and we get an echo. If I remember the pattern that these, and I've already done four of them correctly. There you are, Amigos. Commander Alden has asked me to convey you to the, you the following information. The president, we're looking into reports of missing relatives of the Cranium Loopy. With the cro cooperation of the Silver Griffins, we're currently searching for any clues to their whereabouts. Thanks to the concerning efforts of Ragenfrid and the others, the general public has been willing to co cooperate with our investigation. Though many still harbor feelings of distrust for the collaborators and the kin, they've grown more receptive to our cause on the whole. Armval has been making steady progress in preparing for the memorial service. He plans to host a meeting between the various community leaders to go over the finer details. In fact, he was wondering whether you could assist in delivering the invitations. If you could spare the time, um, you should be able to find him in the Mercantile District. Anyway, that's all for now. I have a few other matters to attend to, so if you'll excuse me, duty calls. What well, better way to uh, attract attention and show support for things than having the Warrior of Light be the one to deliver the invitations. Thanks for coming. I would have come uh, as no surprise that planning a memorial ce ceremony with a whole bloody nation would keep a man busy. But by Vogler, this is something else. Hardest has been gathering information on those who died in the war, especially when it comes to the skulls and other conscripts. And they're the ones we... We need to treat most carefully. If it, we don't acknowledge the crimes of our kin in all their painful truth, then we do a disservice for, to their victims, living and dead. But if we let people p paint them as monsters, who did monstrous things, things we believe we would never do, then we perpetuate a different but less dangerous lie. As for preparing the event itself, I've been holding a meeting with, I'll be holding a meeting with members from each of the settlements around Garibania, I sent invitations to most of them already, but I was hoping you'd help me with the last two. There's Maraz Nun in the Pyrrhine Stones, and Sarisha of Vera Nilia. Nilia. I'll give you one each for each. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if they refused, considering how they people suffered at the hands of the skulls. But I hope you we can remind them that deep down we're all just people trying to survive to protect our loved ones. We may have been have driven the Empire from our lands, but as long as we hold fast to the grudges born of their attempts to divide and let us set us against one another, we'll never be free of their legacy of cruelty. With that in mind, I've included an account of my experiences with the Silver Griffins and the people I've met, victims, collaborators, and their friends and their family, men and women who lived through it all, survivors. Even if they refuse to join the ceremony, at least they will know, and hopefully understand, our reasons for holding the event. Granted, I'm not much, not had much practice in writing important letters, but I think they'll get the message. Well, you being the one to deliver them will make a world of difference, I'm sure. Take care, won't you? Start off with the Makoti. Greetings, friends. It's been a long time since last you spoke. What brings you to my village? Well, the rumors are true. You need not read this letter to know its contents. I understand that Regenfrid's volunteers are working to support the families of those lost in the war, which few will deny as worthy cause, but to include the relatives of the Crania Lupi. The Skulls watched the Empire slay us in our thousands, and still they turned their cloak cloaks and fought for 
oppressors. But you would ask us to mourn the deaths of those curs alongside their victims? We have every right to be angry or refuse. Our involved wishes only that you read its account before we're coming to a decision. To demiss us out of hand would be discussed. Courteous. Very well. Family. As none, my tribe is my family. And I know all too well the responsibility that brings. I would do anything to protect them. Anything. Loyalty, pride, conscience. Conscience. My very soul. All are meaningless if I cannot assure the safety of those I love. I suspected some skulls have been faced with the self-same choice, but to see how their kin suffered, I cannot say I do not understand. I wish that I did not. Their crimes will never be forgiven. They cannot be. But I and many, any others who are willing can offer our prayers of those tortured souls and the men they could have been. I accept the invitation. Not on behalf of the M tribe, but as Mar Maraz, none. Though I will put the question to my people that they may decide for themselves. I am also eager to make, make the acquaintance of the person who wrote this letter. He does not, not want to turn a blind eye to the bitter truth, painful though it is to confront. The meeting will be the perfect opportunity to take his measure. Well, I'll be damned. Welcome to what do you owe the pleasure of your visit. Then it is as suspected. There has been rumors that such a ceremony w would take place. Although we had traveled far to make this invitation, I must decline. We cannot mourn the loss of the fallen if the Crania Lupi are to be counted among them. Like the Kaliana, they chose to aid the Gallian oppressors, killing and bleeding for those who would pillage our lands, cowards and traitors all. But are we to assume the Kaliana who died fighting for the Empire will be honored as well? If so, then all the more reason for us to refuse. This is your right, and no one will say otherwise. I come only to present a letter and ask that you read it in full. Our involved understands and accepts that you might refuse. The only request is that you read his account, then decide. It's it's the latter. It's the latter. It's like we accept your refusal, but it, we want you to read the letter. If you insist. That, 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 that. No one has spared suffer was spared suffering in the occupation. Not the resistance, not the collaborators, not the families of both. No one. That so many would die in shame and ignominy. He having sold their souls only to lose everything is a tragedy and a lesson. If they are forgotten, then the lesson of their folly is forgotten. For the sake of this land we call home, I will join you in remembrance, remembrance and implore my people to do the same. In mourning, may we strengthen our ties with our neighbors as well. By together facing our past, we can build a foundation of lasting peace and prosperity. 
It would be my honor to attend the proposed meeting and look forward to personally thanking your friend Arval for his dedication. I and my peers have much to learn from the example he has set. Oh, thank you. Good going, Arnval. Uh, I'm assuming he took some of his lessons from the Sultana into account when writing those letters. He took somebody who he, he kind of knew would flat out to decline, just just refuse, and turned it from from a no to a yes. So how did you fare in the fringes? Uh, <laughs> wow, what did you put in that letter? They said that about me? It's rare for me to get such glowing praise, especially from renowned leaders like Sarisha and, and Maraz Nun. More importantly though, they agreed to attend the meeting, and I've got you to thank for that. For all, I imagine it's hard to turn down an invitation when it's hand-delivered by the warrior of light himself. Before I get ahead of myself, though, I must remember that this is only the beginning. Bringing everyone together is one thing. Coming to an agreement on an extremely divisive issue is a different kettle of fish entirely, but Grace would be quick to point out. But, as she taught me, if our cause is just and our hearts are true, those, those of like mind will surely answer the call. And answer it, they have. While, while there are bound to be differences of opinion, I'm sure there's nothing we can't overcome if we put our minds to it. In that, to that end, I was hoping you could join us. If you have the time to spare, there's still a few loose ends Ragnfrid and I need to tie up beforehand, so we'll meet you at the palace as soon as we can. Just having you there will make a world of difference. Oh, uh, for the meaning, yes? So while we all agree upon the importance of the ceremony, recognize, recognize that the inclusion of Crania Lupi will be distressing for many. My two lost family at their hands, and I would never ask others to forgive and forget. But for all their crimes, they are Alamegans, just like us. None made the decision to side with Garlemald lightly. They had a choice. They chose to betray us. Who among us have not made difficult choices for Kith and Kin? And do not forget that Fodola chose to stand between us and a primal. What does that have to do with it? Brothers and sisters, arguing will avail us not. The fate of Alamiga rests on my shoulders and yours, and those of every man, woman, and child that calls it home. To uphold our honor, to strive for prosperity, uh, pr to protect our loved ones, we all know the weight of these responsibilities. It was the self-same weight which drove many of our people to serve our oppressors, misguided as it was. And though they chose a different, unconscionable path, in the end we all wanted the same, to deliver our families from prosecution. They might live to see one more day. Because another day in shame and self-hatred is still better than none at all. The grateful dead are survived by their, their despair. A despair which threatens to drag us all into the abyss from where there is no escape. Know that it surely will if we welcome it into our hearts out of disdain for those we cannot forgive. But we, Alamegans, will not be so easily defeated. We will stand united and conquer this menace.
Every Alamegan we fought, who fought and died did so in the hopes that one day we, we would be free. And we are free. We are free. By the blood of our fallen brothers and sisters, we are free. Free to lock away the pain and pretend it is no power over us till it festers and takes us in our beds. We're free to lay it, lay it to bear and let it breathe. To acknowledge and to mourn our people at their best and their worst. The past is ours to bear. All of it. For ourselves and for future generations so that we needn't suffer like we... So they needn't suffer like we did. Let us make Alamigo a nation where no man is left behind. Where he can make all the wrong choices and will be afforded the chance to make a right one. No one better than any of us uh, could have hoped. You have my gratitude for your part in the proceedings, but we both know who the real hero of the day was. This was all Ehrenwald's idea, and it was his words that finally won over the naysayers. Now that we have the community leaders on our side, we, we should have a much easier time convincing the rest of the citizenry. Of course, holding the ceremony is by no means our final objective. No matter what we say, some will refuse to attend. Is my hope, however, that it will be still serve to provide a measure of closure for us all, and to ease the plight of the vulnerable and ostracized. Speaking of which, you will recall the incident with Fordola in Alagana. The young girl she saved and her mother wished to thank her personally. Considering what happened last time, though, I have reservations. It would be a valuable opportunity to present a former skull in a more positive light. On the other hand, I don't need, you to, t need to tell you how unpredictable she can be. And that's before taking her echo into consideration. But that's a conversation for another day. Go and get some rest. You've earned it. Can you quickly use the restroom? Be right back. Oop. This is what I want. Alright, I'm back. You get a meal of salted Bavarian cod. 
Okay, I was wrong. We didn't see the blasphemy. We still haven't seen the blasphemy. We gotta see the blasphemy at some point in time here. We only have two more quests in this quest line. Once we're done with this, I'll dye my gear and then we'll go. We'll continue on with the uh, MSQ. Something terrible has happened. Now we'll get to see the blast beam soon. It's Fotola, she escaped. Huh? She was accompanying a squadron out on a training exercise. One moment she was there and the next she was gone. I don't think much of it at the time, but she's been acting strangely ever since she went to meet that mother and child. You know, the ones who wanted to thank her for saving the girl's life. When I told Commander Aldin about it, he went charging off to Alagana to ask them if they had any idea where Fodola might be. I thought of going after him, but when I heard you were heading this way, I reckoned it better to send you in my stead. Godspeed, Emigos. Fodola! I mean, you essentially have been making amends for your choice of... with the Garleans. For Christ's sakes, <laughs> I consider Gaius Van Belsar the one who wanted to conquer Eorzea with the ultimate weapon. A friend. And even Nero, the one who activated the freaking weapon. <laughs> oh, well, I still don't quite trust him because he's kind of an insane, uh, mad, mad, he's mad. <laughs> mad technologist. I at least consider him <laughs> not a threat. Amigos, I wasn't expecting to see you here. You've heard what happened then. This is for Dolo's beginning to earn our trust. She's given us a slip. As you may know, she wears a choker that is designed to do exactly what it is chanted to trigger. It's supposed to prevent her from escaping. If I, I were to give the order, she would be dead within moments. And she knows that. I took the risk anyway, so I have to believe she has a good reason. I... That's what we're looking into now. We're hoping Clarel and her young Lily here could shed some light on the matter. I'd like to ask you about your conversation with Fedola, if you may, if we may. Yes, of course. I know she's the butcher, or was at least, but it didn't seem right to go without thanking her. That's why I requested a meeting to express my gratitude and my apologies. She was quiet at first, just stood there as we spoke, as if she weren't even listening. Then I mentioned the blasphemy. We looked at Lily and all of a sudden clutched her own head and cried out in agony. The Echo. Can you remember what you were thinking about at the time? Um, a man. The one I saw in the city. What? Who? He has something to do with these people panicking. I think he did. When I was waiting for you, I saw him. He was by himself. He looked poorly, so I asked if he was alright. He said yes. He had a nice smile. got up and started walking, but then... He was shouting and screaming. It was so frightening. I didn't want to talk about it. Not even to Mum. Wish you'd said something sooner. Sorry, Puppet. This is my fault for leaving you on your own. Man who turned into a blasphemy, I'd wager. 
The girl saw him, which means Fortola has now seen him too. There's one other thing. When Fordola was having her, uh, let me turn, she said something. Charlie? No. Charlotte. Charlie, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Ring any bells. I uh, can't say it does, but if she has any, he has anything to do with the skulls, Silver Griffins, she has some information on them. We best have a word with Regenford, then. We've both been very helpful. I'd also like to thank you for being so kind to Fordola. You may not have said it, but I'm sure it meant a lot to her. I have a couple thing, things I'd like to ask, so I'll catch up with you later. So, Fordola probably now knows who turned and identified them as somebody who was part of the Skulls, who she worked with, and now is going after hunting the blasphemy on her own, because... She's an idiot that way. Uh, Cholette? You say? Yes, that name came up under an all our recent investigations. I forgot I did the old man voice. As I recall, he served under the Viceroy during the occupation, and his whereabouts are currently unknown. And an older brother named Mensfred, one of the Crania Lupi. Ah! We were talking about this. What would give him a, which would give him a connection to Fedola. Is there anything it, anyone you could tell, tell us more about him? Yes, an uncle who's recently recently helped find him, who we recently helped find employment here in Alagana. It's actually the one who asked us to look for Charlie. Colette. But you'll most likely find him working at the Sleeping Stones, as it happens. I was planning to bring him s something to eat. I'll join you there shortly. So we see the blasphemy here, get an echo, next one, we defeat the blasphemy. Who apparently is Chale. Erlet. 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 Perhaps we should have, should have asked what he looks like. Could this be it? Still looking, eh? That's him over there. I hope we're not interrupting. No, a co- no, no, of course not. It's good to see you, Ragonfred. My word, the Pearl of Alamigo and the Champion of the Lords who brings your esteemed guest to my our humble uh, quarry. <laughs> At ease, my good fellow. We merely wish to ask you about your nephew. Got it. You found him. No luck yet, then. Is there anything else you can tell tell us? More about his childhood, perhaps? Wasn't well, much of one, I'm afraid. Poor boy's life was ruined long before he had, had any say in the matter. His parents and I swore allegiance to Gardemont to secure ourselves and our kin, kin citizenship. For all the good it did, did us here, living amongst our countrymen, we treated as briars. Well, took its toll on him and his brother. 
to be spat on as traitors' associations. One thing led to another, and Unfred, together with most of his friends, joined the Imperial Army. That's how it turned out, you know, the Crania Lupi, guys is loyal little pups. You remember the names of these friends? Yes, they were quite their reputation growing up. Those Emmeline, Rudolph, Rudolph, and the angry little girl who grew up, up to become the butcher herself, Fodola. Charlotte was part of their group too, yes? And from what, what we've heard, he chose not to become a soldier. When he had lasted a day in training, he knew that better than anyone, for of course. Not that it helped him to, to feel any less guilty for turning his back on the others. He blamed himself for their deaths, for not stopping them when, they, when he had the chance, for not being too strong enough to fight by their side. Maybe save them, maybe not. But he wasn't there, and he wished he, wished he had been. And one day, he was gone. Wherever he is, I hope he's safe and well. So do we. Thank you. The information you share should prove useful. And for you, I brought some food. Why don't you call it a day and go enjoy it with your family? Let him have the peace for now. Back to Alagana. So not only was his brother a member of the Skulls, but Charlotte himself was a childhood friend of Fordola's. I'm told he refused the support of the Silver Grip. I, I, I'm told he refused the support of the Silver Grippins as well. He'd been trying to make his own way for some time now. His brother and his friends died at Specula in Paris. Save for Fordola and the gods only know, know how he felt about her after that. Or how... Or how Fordola felt about Charlotte before, before seeing Lily's memories of him transforming into a blasphemy. Brother of a man she killed and a childhood friend besides. She thinks she's responsible for this. That's why she ran. To kill the beast. Never thought I'd say this, but worried about her. Fordola is a survivor and an outcast herself. Exactly the sort of person the Silver Griffins are trying to support. You've seen for yourself the sacrifices she's willing to make. If you can learn to feel sympathy for her, maybe others can too. I think we have enough information for the time being. Let's return to the city and plan our next move. Okay, so we don't see the blast for me. <laughs> do we do we even get an echo? <laughs> or is that all for Dola gets the echo? <laughs> they have broken the pattern. <laughs> I, I am mad about this. They had a pattern. They didn't stick to it with the healer one. And barely even healed. They made this too easy. I killed a few beasts. <laughs> you terminus beast. Blasphemies. Yay, leg. Still lagged. How do I know? Because I'm flying, but you can't see me. I am getting music, so that's something. The only problem is that my quest giver or, or quest uh, completionist um, is is currently not visible. Which is not helpful. Hey, 
There we go. I've assigned a few of my soldiers to assist the Silver Griffins in investigating Charlotte's ba background. With luck, we will find him quickly. And then we will pre prepare for what must come after. We have all but certain the Charlotte's the one who transformed into a blasphemy so that there's not to be done but put him out of his misery. As for Fordola, uh, I put Monago and her troops in charge of tracking her. Once they found her, they have permission to lend whatever support they deem necessary. If it comes to it, I may ask you to join the search. Until such time, I ask that you take the, this opportunity to rest. I didn't do anything. I talked to people. I had no action whatsoever. I don't really need to rest right now. Thank goodness you're here. Commander Aldin needs to see you right away. Follow me. Mm. Obviously, all these are normally... I think the intent was, at 85, you would have done the 85 quest. At 86, you would have done the 86 quest. At 87, you would have done the 87 quest. At the 88, you would have done the 88 quest, etc. But no. But we're 90, so... Almost done here. Keep it contained until I arrive, and do not engage if you can help it. Understood? They found it. That was Minago. The unit has found Fordola. Rather, she has found them. In fact, it was Fordola and her, her search party's Link Pearl. Well, she wants a word with you. This is urgent, so be quiet and listen. The blasphemy, my friend, is right in front of us. I tracked him down, and when, he's, when he spotted me, he started heading towards Specular Imperatus. Look, Emigos, I need your help. Charlotte's not... He never wanted to hurt anyone, but this thing he's become is... I can't leave him like this. I've got to stop him, whatever it takes. I'm just going to say I'm on my way. You, you, she's going to run ahead anyways. I'm just going to say I'm on my way. Just, I'm, I'm going to... I'll be there. I owe you. This is Minago. Can you hear me? We've got the blasphemy syrup. Minago, don't die. Ugh. It's on the move. Get ahead of it, but maintain distance. We need to... Fodola! What are you doing? Fodola! Fodola! God damn it. No time to waste. They need our help. Ooh. We got the duty right here. Mariana and, and Allegri are not that far, far from speculating paradise. If we'd let the blasphemy slip through our fingers, it can't. It doesn't bear, bear thinking about it. And while Fordola is determined to slay it by her own hand, we can't allow her reckless to put the lives of others in jeopardy. The time has come for action. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. We finally get to see the blasphemy. Fredola stole our echo. <laughs> Monago. Good, Monago's still alive. Hold the line for as long as you can. My darling, and the warrior of light will be here any moment. Stay strong. Oh, I forgot to put my visor down. You've done well. Leave the rest to us. Yes, sir. See, what I should have been doing is seeing the injured 
a, a resistance guy, I should have thrown a heal his way at least. Get the engine to safety. Coward. Coward. Traitor to them. To everyone. Oh, here's the echo. Right at the last minute. Didn't we see this before? I wish there was another way. So do I, but fighting's the only way I... Only thing I'm good at. Makes me wonder how I ended up with such a... With such a clever, clever brother. Too clever for my own good, maybe. Just the thought of going into battle about getting hurt. About having to hurt other people. You're, you're a bleeding heart. Uh, uh, Charlotte. Charlay. Charlay. That's it. So, Charlie, it's Charlay. Uh, Soon a friend to fly and shoot away. But you let's kill it. I, I could kill if I want to. I could. But you don't. There's no shame in that. Leave the soldier into us, Charlie. We'll show the guardians that we're capable of. Get the power and respect we deserve. Then th things will change. We'll, we'll see. We found a place for ourselves, and we'll find your. You'll find yours soon enough. All right, I'll do. Everybody who's enlisting. Be back here tomorrow. What did I do? Give everything they had to give while I hid like a rat waiting for a storm to pass. Coward. 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 Ah! Coward! Coward! Better dead, better forgotten. It's not your fault, Charlie. It's not. You didn't do anything wrong. And I... I'm the coward, the traitor, the butcher. I'll always be the butcher. Don't you dare, Fordola! You don't get to end it. You don't get to give up. I won't let you. You have a lifetime to make amends in your tone. To become something more than you were. If you are die here, you, have, you are everything they say. Everything you believe. Is that what you want? She's not going anywhere. Hornfold, why are you here? There's nowhere else I'd rather be. I can't fight by your side, but I can still cheer you on. I've seen your past, Charlie. Know that you, you were left behind while your friends rushed into battle. It's bloody hard, isn't it? Wanting to do something so desperately with every fiber of your being, knowing that you should, should be able to. You should, but you can't. 
Do you find another way to support them your way? You did that too, didn't you? You were there for them, even if it didn't feel like it. But you were, Charlie. You were. As a friend of mine once said, Not all heroes were forged in the fires of battle. The history of Alamigo is written blood. But we cannot change the past, we can change the future. And for that, we must all play our part. All of us. Let's grant Charlie the peace he deserves. Hansford, Emmeline, one day, be together again, but not yet. You never hurt anyone, Charlie. That's not who you are. You'll be remembered as the kind soul you always were. Blasphemy. Charlie. Of all the other ones, this one is so... Yeah. First off, I need to go into battle mode. As soon as the duty loads, the fight loads. Goddamn lag. <laughs> Alright, so visor down. Alright, Fredola. You you are getting the cardia. Uh, you're also getting a shield. Albon gets a shield. And then I'm just gonna also pull him up. And let me dot him up. In the fight. Okay, Raubon ends up being the tank. I guess he gets the card, yeah. Damn it! Ah! 
Fuck. Alright, let's try that again. Make it very easy. <laughs> just, just get to, through the damn thing. It's all because of that that the the tower thing. You can skip the cutscene, we already saw this. Alright. Preparatory actions. Uh, we're, we're putting the Cardia on uh, Ravon because he's uh, going to be uh, the tank. Might be in Gladiator, she's going to be off tank. Give us all shields. Let's fight. I could have panheimered. That's what I could have done. I did that completely and utterly wrong.
Despite the fact that she was a gladiator, which is a tank, she ended up doing a DPS uh, to LB. <laughs> Thank you. I mean it. Why did I heal a Monago's shoulder? <laughs> so, here, let me take care of that. Everywhere for you. You know. We put down their last remaining beast spawned by the blasphemy. It's a pity we could do not for those who turned, but they were able to prevent further casualties. It's nothing short of a miracle. It's astounding, too. Looking back at Charlie's, Charlie's case, it's, although his existence spurred others to transform, he never attacked any settlements or travelers. Even when he underwent the change in the middle of a crowded street, those who were present escaped with minor injuries at worst. I think that, deep down, his compassion is what kept the raging blasphemy at bay. The only time he emerged from hiding was the journey to the place where his brothers died. Aye. It's clear he still retains some semblance of his former self. Another victim of the Empire's terrible legacy, along with his friends and so many others. But the Crania Lupe wasn't the, the creation of the Imperials alone. Many of those youth sought a place with them because they were denied one with us. That's why the memorial ceremony is so important. That our chance to face our past together, to give them in depth, to give them in death what they couldn't in life. Do not deny anyone a place in memory, even if it hurts or makes us feel ashamed. You'll be attending, won't you? Ah, uh, I've been ordered to, to, so I suppose not. I haven't been ordered to, so I suppose not. In light of your legal service to Alamigo, I intend to have the conditions by which you are bound eased. Provided you're able to gain approval, I'm able to gain approval, you will be granted a degree of freedom. At the very least, we should soon have no need for that choker. 
There'll be no objections from me. You've done well. <laughs> I didn't know any better. I, I think you were smiling. Well, I for one can be happier her efforts have been recognized. Gives me that much more motivation to continue my work with the Silver Griffins and bring the people of Alamigo closer together. Got to do my my best to keep up with a certain l little lordling, eh? I think we are done enough for one day. Time we got some rest. And this will be the the final thing where he tells me to go back and talk to his delegate. Allow me, as bo both the Guardian Valamigo and as your sworn comrade, to express my thanks for coming to our aid in these desperate times. No matter what manner of disaster may befall us, your presence alone is enough to keep the flame of hope burning bright. Aye, even someone on the very precipice of despair such as Fordola can find salvation in your guiding light. Lena and Becca Thick, aren't you? Heavens forbid people would stop would stop throwing themselves in harm's way at every opportunity, or you're something of an immortal flame yourself. Um mm, These are good choices. I'm going to throw it back at him. Immortal Flame. Uh, forgot to put my visor back up. I won't. Ah! Been waiting for a chance to use that one, haven't you? I like to think I can still pull my weight on and off the battlefield. That might be a bit generous. In any case, it's safe to say we're all benefited enormously from your sterling work here. You couldn't ask for a better healer or a better friend. Ambassador Radzahan will be with blah 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. Complete the series in dire gear. <laughs> Damn it. My advisor back up. Greetings. How goes it in El Amigo? Ah, everything's done. Limiting blasphemies, helping organize a memorial ceremony. It can, certainly kept you busy. Fine example of going above and beyond the Call of Duty, and I'll be sure to send word of your exploits to Ulda. Uh, wait till the Sultana hears about this. Her Grace will not be the only one to welcome the news. On behalf of the Grand Company of Eorzea and our allies, allow me to express my most heartfelt gratitude. Do, 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 do. You can now die at the job specific gear for level 90 healers. All right, been waiting for this. Yeah, the white and into the red. Let's let's show all the equipment here. Now the weapon, although it didn't look like it died. Oh, it's just the tips. By the visor. Hide the body. That'll be a significant change. Hide the gloves. Oh, not melt. Hide the 
pants. Honestly, you can barely even see because of everything else. And the shoes. There you go. Let's take a look at this all tied up. Yeah, it's just the tips on the on the weapon. I'm kind of disappointed. Kind of. There you go. All right. So, 6.1, there's supposed to be another quest after completing all five of these, these quests, so. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so we'll find that out in 6.1 when that happens. But in the meantime, we're not even done with, with, with the actual Endwalker. So we're going to go ahead, go back to Reaper. My Red Reaper. And we'll, we'll return to Friends Gathered. Which will be here in Old Charlene. That will be in the next video. Uh, because this is not the way we roll. Um, get to that later. By the way, it's be part five, not part two. Press the wrong key. Alright, we'll be back in just a few minutes. I'm going to do the down up thing to get the videos. And uh, when we come back, we will continue with the MSQ. Now that our job armor is diable. For everybody! Yay!